This evening, uh, former heavyweight boxing champion and Hall of Fame boxer, Ken Norton, better known to me as my dad. Welcome to Sports Sunday, man. <laughs> I know. Thanks good. a lot for stopping by. Yeah, that first talk about, since we are here in the town, the hometown of the greatest, uh, that magical night on March 31st, 1973, in the San Diego Sports Arena. Talk about that night. What was that like for you? Well, first of all, that one is good heart. <laughs> Secondly, that night, Godzilla could not beat me. I worked so hard, so long, and this was the end result. So I was in perfect shape, mentally and physically. And also in the preparing for that fight mentally, I was reading a book by Napoleon Hill called Think and Grow Rich. It speaks in monetary terms, but you can apply it to anything you're doing. So I read that book over and over and over. Each time I read it, I had something different from it. So on that first fight, I was prepared mentally, and physical was not a problem. I was always in good shape, so that was not a problem. But, and uh, the end result proved that. So you got the, the first big win, the second fight, and then the third fight with the biggest of them all, maybe, right? In Yankee Stadium, in New York City, a lot of hype built up around this one. Well, that's very true, and that night it had a strike on. So the car going in, limos getting rocked. But that night, I thought that I won that fight. And uh, the reason being I felt that I didn't win is because at that time, boxing went as Ali went. And uh, if he had lost that fight, I think we would just have another rematch. But then again, they, would, they said that boxing would have went down so much. But uh, that's, you can say what might happen. Mm -hmm. But I just felt that I won the fight. And I still felt it. Talk on it. <laughs> <laughs> they talk about uh, the state of boxing today. Uh, they don't have, there's not a marquee guy, a guy that kind of can carry the sport on his back and keep it going like Well, not the heavyweight division. Right. Mm -hmm. And boxing goes at the heavyweight division goes. Mm -hmm. I feel that, that I won't say the guys aren't talented, mm -hmm. but they aren't, how do I put this nicely? There will be no other era like the 70s. Mm -hmm. There was the one before, and there hasn't been one since. Mm -hmm. In the era of the 70s, there were six guys on any given night, one fighter could beat the other one. There was Ali. There was Fraser, there was Foreman, there was the choir was involved in that. There was Ron Lyle and Ernie Shavers. And at the end of it came Larry Holmes. So there were so many individu individuals that on any given night, everything perfect, it gets with in 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 a minute. And that proved that when I beat Ali, when Fraser beat Ali, I beat Fraser, <laughs> then uh, uh, Foreman beat Fraser, then I beat Foreman. It was no flip flopping. There was so much talent. It was uh, remarkable. Now, looking back through some of that videotape, it looks like you didn't care for Ali's lip, <laughs> but now you guys get along all right. We're very good friends. The, the point was, it wasn't that I didn't. Just like his lip. The thing was, I didn't listen to it. I blanked him out. If Ali could get into your head, he could beat you anyone. Like with Fraser, he got into his head, and he beat him. With Foreman, Foreman was a monster. He got into his head and beat him. And uh, with me, I feel that I kept Ali from getting into my head with by not answering him, number one. Number two is by reading the book by Napoleon Hill. Number three, by mocking him. 
Talk a little bit about what you've been up to lately. You do have been doing charity work all over the world. Uh, most recently, now here in Louisville with the uh, with the hurricane evacuees here. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, you know the hurricane victims that uh, are suffering now, and you coming along and helping out where you can. Well, the thing, the way I feel about it is that God blessed me throughout my life, and all I can do is to give back in any kind of way. I feel that. By me being in a hole and having someone who's been through so much catastrophe, so much, so many problems, it's a, I'm only going to be blessed for it in the end. So I do what I can when I can and as much as I can. So you going to give some money to them? No, are you going to give some money to them? I've done it. I've given my part. I don't look sure. at my watch. <laughs> it's not leaving. That's, that's funny. funny. <laughs> my watch. I don't think you're going to make it on the plane with that watch. <laughs> I want to say one more thing. Go right ahead. I realize this is your show. I realize you're doing very well. You're climbing the mountain. But I don't want the mountain. Don't let your father grab you by the pants and pull you back. <laughs> Uh, I'm joking. Kid. Appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by. I'll get up, sir. Love you to death. Okay. Thank you so much.